All right, so these questions will be split up onto individual pages, but let's just have a look here. In the circuit diagram below, the battery has an EMF of, si of six and a negligible internal resistance. Okay. So the first question says, calculate the effective resistance in the circuit. Okay, so what you need to understand is that conventional current tells us that it goes out of the positive. When the current gets here, it decides it has to split, okay? Some of it would go this way. The rest would go this way. It would then all combine and then go like that. So this part here where it is split up is what we call parallel. So that's in parallel. So what a lot of learners might do incorrectly is when they try to calculate this resistance, they might say, so this is wrong. Look here, this is wrong, guys. You cannot say one over four plus one over two plus one over three. But Kevin, I thought that's what you do in parallel. You first have to combine these two together because they are in series, okay? And that's gonna give you six, okay? So this branch here is six ohms. So then you can say one, so then what you would have is this, a six and a three. Now you can go use your parallel formula. Okay, so one over R parallel is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. And so you could say one over R parallel is gonna be uh, one over six plus one over three. And then one over R parallel would give you, now just go type that in, one over two. Flip everything around and you end up with R parallel is equal to two ohms. And that's the only resistance we can see, so that is the answer. Okay, this next one says, what is the reading on ammeter A1? Okay, so we know um, the formula I is equal to V over R. Uh, you could also use EMF is equal to I big R plus small R. And so I think a lot of learners would be more comfortable with that. Remember that there is no internal resistance in the battery, so you could just use this formula. Okay, and so we could then say that the EMF is six the current is what we're trying to find, and then R is the resistance in the circuit, which is two. If you then work out I, you would get three amps. Okay, so it's three amps. And so where would three amps be? Three amps would be everywhere in the main part of the circuit. So where's the main part? So remember we said that the current goes like this, and then some of it goes this way, and some of it goes this way, and then it combines over here. So the part where it's all combined, that is the main part of the circuit, and that's where we'll get three amps. So A1 is definitely three amps, but that doesn't mean that A2 is gonna be three amps. It won't be three amps over there. This one says, what is the reading on A2? Okay, so the way that it works is if you have a, if you have a, um, a circuit, okay, and let's say we had a, Let's say we had a resistor over here, and so that would have a voltmeter. Let's say V1. So I'm just giving you a bit of theory now. Then we have a parallel part with the resistor. Let's say this is R1, R2, R3, and then they combine. So what you must remember is that these voltages are the same. So let's say we had a voltmeter connected across this one. We'll call that V3. We might have one over here called uh, V2, and we might have one connected across the whole parallel part called V4. We need to, need to, need to remember that V2 is the same as V3 because they are in parallel and voltage in parallel is the same, and that means it's also equal to the whole thing, which is V4. Remember that if there were two voltmeters, uh, if there were two resistors over here, uh, you would first combine them, okay? Um, so it doesn't mean that this voltmeter and this voltmeter are the same. It means that once you've combined these two, then the total voltage in this branch is the same as the total voltage in that branch, okay? Um, okay, so now if you wanted to, let's say for example, the way it works now, so here's your battery with an EMF. Now let's say the EMF is 10 volts. Then if this voltmeter here is uh, seven volts, then how many volts are left over? Well, the way it works is that the battery can give 10 volts, 
seven volts used over here. So there's only three volts left. So that means V2 would be three volts, V3 would be three volts, and V4 would be three volts. Okay, what if this resistor is not even there? So we take it out. Then if you have a 10 volt battery, well then there is only 10 volts to use in the parallel part. So that would be 10 volts, that would be 10 volts, and that would be 10 volts, okay? So what that then means is that this voltmeter is gonna be six volts because here's the battery's voltage and there are no other devices. Okay, so it's only the parallel. And then this whole branch is gonna have a voltage of six volts. It doesn't mean six over here and six over here. Maybe it's gonna be like three here and, or no, like maybe, uh, maybe four here and two here, for example. Okay, we don't need to really know that right now because what we can then do is we can use this branch and we can use our normal Ohm's law formula and we can use, okay, so we're trying to find I2 so we must use the voltage in that part. Remember we said this is where the red part would have gone. And so the voltage is six. And the resistance in that part is the series of four plus two, which is six. And so that's gonna give us one amp. Okay, so there we go. What we now know then is that there's three amps in the main part. When that three amps gets to this part over here, we now know that one amp goes this way. And so that then means two amps would go this way, if they ever ask us that. Two amps would go that way. And then the two amps and the one amp would combine again to become three amps over there. Okay, so the answer is one amp. The next question says, what is the power dissipated in the four ohm resistor. Now power, there are multiple formulas. There's VI, there is I squared R, and then there's V squared over R. Okay, so it's pretty much just think about what you have. So we don't know this one's voltmeter, okay? We do know the current, how much current is flowing through here? One amp, and how much current flows through here? Also one amp, because the current is one amp in this whole part. Let me just show you that again, the current through all of this is one amp. Okay, so we don't have voltage, so let's not use those formulas. Uh, let's use this one, because we, we know the resistance and the power. So we can say P is equal to I squared times R, so P is equal to one squared times four, and that's gonna be four. Now the unit of power is watts. And then with this question, it says, what is the reading on voltmeter V? Well, remember we already spoke about that and we said that that would also just be six volts and we discussed the reasons why um, in the previous part.